gentlemen, I first would like to acknowledge the presence of Dr. the Honorable Timothy Harris, Prime Minister of St. Kitts and Nevis. I also acknowledge the Honorable Eugene Hamilton, Minister of National Health Insurance, Human Settlement, Community Development, et al., along with His Excellency Ian Leibert, Permanent Representative of St. Kitts and Nevis to the United Nations. I also acknowledge my good friends, His Excellency Hubert Charles, Ambassador of the Commonwealth of Dominica, His Excellency Gabriel Abed, Ambassador of Barbados, and Her Excellency Rose Benjamin, Consul General of Grenada. I'd also like to acknowledge our friends at CS Global who helped us organize this event. Please give them a round of applause. I would like to welcome Dr. the Honorable Timothy Harris to the stage to address us tonight. Tonight, please give him a round of applause that he deserves. Thank you. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Allow me firstly to thank Mr. Our Ambassador, His Excellency Justin Hawley, for his kind words of introduction. He is, of course, our most senior representative in the Middle East. And, of course, we have our embassy located in Abu Dhabi. And I hope that you would make use of it, those of our citizens and those interested in doing business with St. Kitts and Nevis. I want to acknowledge my ministerial colleague, the Honorable Eugene Hamilton, and of course, our Ambassador to United Nations, His Excellency Ian Leibard, Excellencies of the Diplomatic and Consular Corps, fellow citizens, I want to bid all of you a warm welcome to this important gathering. As our Ambassador indicated, we could not have come all the way to Dubai without seizing the opportunity to meet with you, our good citizens who are resident here, and of course to have an opportunity to meet with our international marketing agents and all those who have been key partners in the development of St. Kitts and Nevis. Tonight I want to say thank you to all of you who have come out this evening to be part of this gathering. Thank you. I marvel that it was perhaps about three years ago that I last came to Dubai and I reflected that we had a lovely event similar to this one. Between 2018 and now, much has happened. But the most significant development in the world has been the advent of the COVID-19 pandemic, which in a way had destabilized our societies as we knew them, our economies and our countries. Today in 2021, I'm happy to say that St. Kitts and Nevis, it's making its way out of the shadow of COVID-19. And we are very optimistic that the new year 2022 will be a very important one as we pivot our country, your country, from out of the shadows of the COVID-19 pandemic to a part of sustained growth and development for the people of St. Kitts and Nevis. Our aim and my aim has always been to make my beloved country of St. Kitts and Nevis the best example of a well-manning state. And we continue to pursue that part for our country as we deliver a stronger and safer future to all of our citizens. We need you, our citizens here, we need you to contribute to the development of our beautiful country. We need you to be able to feel a sense of pride and warmth whenever your country's name is being mentioned. 
because you are a vital part of our diasporic community and our country needs you always and we develop a country on which you can rely on. So to all of our citizens, could I hear you say, we will for Sinkits and Nevis. We will for Sinkits and Nevis. Will you? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Prime Minister, for that wonderful speech. Can we give him another round of applause, please? Thank you. So this time I will be quick. I'm just, I will invite the head of our Citizenship by Investment Unit, Mr. Les Khan, to address the crowd about the different options in our citizenship program. Good evening, everyone, and it's a pleasure to be here. First, allow me to accept the protocol that was established before me, Mr. Prime Minister, ministers, ambassadors. Um, I would like to thank um, CS Global for putting on such a fantastic show and, and really appreciate the effort that you have done this afternoon. Thank you very much. Um, I'm the technical guy, so I will focus on uh, the CBI program as we know it. Um, COVID has had an impact on the CBI unit. and. All agencies within the government has been affected. And to that end, we have had impacts that have impact, has had effects on our IMAs, our agents, and our clients. I just want you to be aware that during this time, we, the unit has functioned as efficiently as it can, and we have been able to process all the applications that we are receiving, albeit um, with some delays. We should recognize that also there are other areas that might be um, slowed down a little and as at this point in time we have begun to recover from all the delays suffered by COVID. And this is both um, with the issuance of CORs, the um, issuance of passports, and our banking system. So we are continuously looking at the areas that we can provide efficiency. It is, no, uh, it is well known that St. Kitts and Nevis is the best known um, program in the world. It's also the most efficient program in the world. And it would not be as efficient as it is and as successful as it is without the major support of our IMAs and our uh, agents internationally. To name a few of the, the IMAs and agents who have been helping us tremendously through this period of COVID and, and in the success of our programs and our projects, um, we have Blumina, we have RIF, we have REACH, Migrate World, AAA, Savory, Guide, and Caribbean as some of the major uh, agents and IMAs that we have. Please, if I've missed anyone out, it's not because um, it's intentional. Uh, it's just I, I don't remember everyone. Um, having said that, again, I would like to talk about the alternative investment option. We know it is the, the latest um, investment opportunity that we're going to be having. And um, a lot of people ask us about the investment, the alternative investment option and what it is. The alternative investment option is where there is a government mandate and it's privately funded or privately owned or privately funded and government owned. And to this end, we have two projects that are falling under and have been approved under the alternative investment option. The Prime Minister alluded to the new correctional facility. This is going to be um, an alternative investment option and it has been awarded to Galaxy, our real estate developer who has done Ramada. So the um, correctional facility will be offered to Galaxy. The second um, alternative in investment option that has been approved right now is one that is 
um, being developed by our local developer or very um, successful and delivering a developer, Mr. Dion Daniels, and that's going to be a middle income um, development that's going to be run up across four constituencies on the island. So this gives you an idea of some of the things that we will be thinking about under the alternative investment option. Um, we are trying to do infrastructure projects that meets the government mandates, and as a result, we could be seeing more over the next uh, couple of years. Thank you.